On February 2, the consecrated men of Jerusalem gathered in St. Stephen's Church, a real mosaic of different religious expressions. When the week ended in Jerusalem, the faithful also gathered in Bethlehem for a day of prayer for Christian unity and for peace in the world. Hosha Siriyan Guest House, a hotel located in the Syrian neighborhood of Bethlehem, has been voted by TripAdvisor users as one of the best hotels in the Middle East. A group of collaborators from the Holy See, led by His Excellency Monsignor Piero Marini, made a pilgrimage to the Holy Land to return to the origins of the faith. In the depths of the Negev Desert, in Mitzperamon, lies a geological jewel. Since the Bronze Age, it has been inhabited by various peoples named in the scriptures. In Jerusalem, on the day in which the church celebrates the presentation of the Lord in the temple and the day of consecrated life, a real mosaic made up of different religious expressions attended these celebrations. On this date, the celebration of the Feast of Candlemas also takes place. The procession entered the Basilica of St. Stephen Proto-Martyr with the religious, who carried torches. The Mass was presided over by the prior of the Dominican community, Father Martin Stasik. I think, as it is a feast of a meeting, Jesus Christ, together with uh, Mary and Joseph, and Simeon and Anna on the other side, that's a feast of meeting, a big meeting in the temple. So I think that here in Jerusalem we need meetings too, as we do uh, today, it's a city who knows divisions and struggles, and so I think meetings, peaceful meetings of faithful people are important here in this city. At the end of the celebration, Monsignor Jacinto Bulos Marcuzzo paid tribute to those who offer their lives to God. Among them is Sister Emma, who this year celebrates 64 years of consecrated life. Io povera miserabile che... The desire of my poor soul has always been to be faithful, but I was certainly so often unfaithful, imperfect in so many things. I am surprised and full of gratitude. I give thanks to the Lord for all I have received in 64 years. Now I am getting ready for my last trip, happy to meet him and enjoy him forever. It is interesting to note how the feast celebrated on this day has its roots in the Old Testament and in Judaism. Quando guardiamo nel Vangelo come quell'episodio è raccontato sempre all'inizio At the beginning of the gospel episode it seems that it is the rite of redemption of the firstborn. Jesus was the firstborn, but he was offered to God as a priest of the new covenant. So for him there is no mention of ritual. When his parents went to the temple, they did not redeem him. It was he who redeemed the world. The Biblicist friar, Frederick Manns, shows us a copy of the Temple of Jerusalem at the time of Jesus and describes the places the Holy Family visited in order to submit to the Law of Moses. It was at this point that Simeon and Anna realized that the prophecy was being fulfilled. Maria Mary, who presents her son to the priest and then to Simeon and Anna, represents the church, whose mission it is to present Jesus to the people of Israel, to the rest of the people of Israel, to the faithful of Israel. This is the vocation of the church. On February 1st, faithful from several Christian churches gathered in the Church of St. Catherine next to the Basilica of the Nativity for the celebration of the Day of Prayer for Christian Unity and for Peace in the World. The joint prayer was presided by the pastor of Bethlehem. Christians of Jerusalem attended the prayer meeting between January 20 and January 28, since Israel denies citizens of the Palestinian territories permission to circulate in Jerusalem, the prayer meeting also took place in the city of Bethlehem. 
اليوم اجتمعنا نحن رعاة الكنائس في محافظة بيت لحم من أجل الصلاة من أجل الوحدة وخاصة صلينا. We the priests of the churches of Bethlehem gather today for prayer and unity, and together we join our Christian brothers in the Middle East, in Iraq, in Syria, and in Yemen, where they face persecution and violence in cities, villages, and churches. We pray for our survival in Palestine, especially because we live in difficult circumstances, which have reduced the population of the Holy Land to less than one percent. The Palestinian Christians, especially the Palestinians, and I am proud of the Israeli occupation of this land. We have become less than one percent in Palestine. We have come here today for a meeting for the liturgy of the Holy Spirit. We gather today in the liturgy at the service of the Word and of the prayer for unity and forgiveness. This is the foundation of unity among us. We live moments of joy, and through our prayers and actions, we are able to achieve unity. About 30,000 inhabitants live in Jesus' city of birth. Catholics, Orthodox, and Lutherans together represent less than 40% of the population. A prayer experience like no other, it reinforces bonds and hope for their daily life. الصلاة بشكل عام هي العلاقة أو الصلة بين الإنسان والله سبحانه وتعالى. In the blessed days of Christmas, when Christ came to bring peace between heaven and earth, between mankind and Creator, all the churches were invited to take part in one project, the project of Christian unity, which everyone strongly desires. All of us belong to different denominations and to churches of different languages, but what unites us is our faith in the Lord Jesus. حتى نشترك في عمل واحد وهو الوحدة المسيحية التي يصب إليها الجميع. For the local community, praying for Christian unity and peace in the place where Jesus was born is extremely significant. Here, Christmas is present every day and reaffirms the communion among all the peoples that was initiated and established in the cave of Bethlehem, as it is written in the book of the prophet Isaiah: "A son was born for all nations." For a son has been born for us, a son has been given to us, and dominion has been laid on his shoulders. And this is the name he has been given, Wonder Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. Isaiah 9, 5. Bethlehem is one of the main destinations for pilgrims who come to the Holy Land. After all, here is the Basilica of the Nativity that marks the place where the Savior was born. It is in this city where Hosh Al Syrian Guest House is located. The hotel, located in the Syrian quarter, has been elected by TripAdvisor users as one of the best three hotels in the Middle East. There are many categories that are taken into consideration, such as comfort, staff, reception, service, and restaurant. The municipality of Bethlehem, with the help of the Italian government and the Heritage Conservation Center, renovated this neighborhood three years ago to preserve its architectural structure. In a place where, for a time, many houses have been abandoned, this hotel is a sign of life and hope. We have a moral duty toward the Palestinian community. We value the products made in Bethlehem. We hire young people to work here. We share our love for this place and for Bethlehem with everyone. This is what we want to offer tourists. We arrived here last night. The service is really very good and we were warmly welcomed. We were surprised by the beauty of the place and we were admired by the ancient architectural design. We found local Palestinian products and we are really satisfied. In Jerusalem, the first week in February was sunny and it felt like spring. The flow of pilgrims visiting the sanctuaries included a group of collaborators of the Holy See, led by His Excellency Monsignor Piero Marini, who has a long and special connection with the Holy Land. 
sono i rapporti. Faith teaches us these interconnections, the relationships of the gospel. Every believer has a different connection with these places. Since I was a master of celebrations, I have always organized trips to rediscover our faith. Sometimes it is necessary to return to the sources of one's faith. Every occasion is new to find new aspects, to discover different places and new sensations. Every time you come to the land of the Lord, you discover something new. Here, everything speaks. Each pilgrim brings his life story that leads them to live and experience with the Holy Land. I associated with the celebration. We, during the liturgical year, celebrate the mysteries of Christ, which took place in these places. It is great to re-experience these celebrated mysteries in those places where they took place. That is why I like to call these celebrations singing pilgrimages. Another aspect that requires attention are variations in the forms of expression of faith. I would like to emphasize the ecumenism that we experience here, the presence of so many peoples who believe in Christ, whose faith has slight variations in Christ. For me, it is a real joy and it increases my faith. Visiting the Holy Land is always a very special experience for those who come here for the first time and for those who return. A very intense experience. It allows you to retrace the most important events in Christ's life. We hope to return. I worked 20 years in the Propaganda Fide. Seeing that faith has truly been propagated is a joy. It was truly a gift to come to the Holy Land. This is my first time here. I'm a professor of Christology at St. Anselm. My experience here is seeing faith and having a true connection with it. On my return to Rome, I will explain to my students how man really welcomes God and how God welcomes man. This is my experience. Coming to Jerusalem and returning to the Holy Land as always means returning to the roots of faith. Furthermore, Jerusalem is always an extraordinary experience. In this place, there is an overlap of faith and overlap of peoples. It gives us hope for the future. El futuro. Monsignor Piero Marini was a master of papal liturgical celebrations from 1987 to 2007. 18 years working alongside Pope John Paul II. There are several indelible events, in particular the journey to the Holy Land during the Great Jubilee in 2000. Ci sono alcuni ricordi che non si possono cancellare. Uno dei ricordi più belli è stato quella della messa celebrata nel cenacolo. Some memories are unforgettable. One of the most beautiful memories was that of the Mass celebrated in the Senecal. I also remember the gesture of John Paul II when he placed his note in the Wailing Wall. I recall the celebration in the square in Bethlehem which witnessed a great public participation. These are the memories that come to my mind right now. It was a truly rich and important journey also for my life of faith, which taught me a lot. I will certainly come back. Un viaggio veramente è ricco e importante anche per la mia vita di fede che mi ha insegnato molto certamente ritornerò we are in the, in the Israeli desert which called the Negev. More than 60% of Israel territory is a desert, and we are right in the middle of it. We are in, a, in an area called Ramon, Machtesh Ramon. Very unique geological phenomenon happened here, and to explain this, we need to think back 220 million years ago. This is where our story begins, with sandstone from the Arab Peninsula covering this whole area and create soft layer on top of what been here before. Later, a new rock appeared under the water that flood this whole area called limestone. So on top of the sandstone, limestone and then water. 
What happened next is due to a combination of events. The clash of two tectonic plates led to the formation of mountains that re-emerged on the level of the sea, after which the area began to undergo a process of erosion by waves, wind, and weather. The calcareous layer, harder but more external, was consumed first, followed by the erosion of the sandstone layer, a softer layer, located below the first one, eroding material ever more rapidly to form the actual crater. So all around us, the limestone are the limits of this mountain, what left from this mountain. And inside we find clay and found sandstone that was uh, inside of the mountain. Also more volcanic activity that usually happens underground, but pushed up right in front of our eyes. Maktesh Ramon, therefore, is not only the largest erosion crater in the world, with its length of 44 kilometers and its extension of 280 square kilometers, it also claims the primacy of involving 70% of the currently known geological phenomena. The desert colors and the absence of water that we currently notice should not mislead us. The Mitzperamon area, and generally the Negev Desert, which had once been much more luxuriant, has been populated over the millennia by many populations. The Negev region is undoubtedly one of the most interesting biblical regions of the territory of Israel that we know and that shows a dwelling that definitely goes back thousands and thousands of years, at least to the first forms of humanity, that is hominids, but also organized groups. Shrines, altars, votive stocks for the Most High, the traces found in the territory began in the Bronze Age, about 3,500 years ago, and continued in the 13th century BC, with the Israelite tribe of Simeon, and after the fall of Jerusalem with the Nabataeans. In the Nabataean kingdom that later became the southern district, Christianity also flourished slowly, and it survived until the 5th or 6th century. Every year, tourists and sportmen push themselves into the depths of the desert, on foot or with a jeep tour. These are signs that confirm what the prophet Isaiah wrote. The desert will blossom, or better, rejoice.